Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a key priority during Kenya's tenure at the United Nations Security Council is to amplify the voice of Africa and the global south in building a compelling case for the nexus between climate change and security. And this is because we recognize that climate change is escalating and complicating new and old conflicts throughout the world. The evidence, ladies and gentlemen, is irrefutable. All the reports, including the most recent intergovernmental planet, uh, panel on climate change, sounded an alarm bell that the world risks facing a global catastrophe unless leaders shift gear on climate change. We need to urgently implement bold mitigation and adaptation measures to avert the looming crisis. It is the least that we can do to bequeath a peaceful and sustainable planet to future generations. Climate change poses an existential threat to Kenya and to most countries in the African continent. In Kenya, extreme weather events including floods and droughts, lead to losses of between 3 and 5 percent of our GDP annually. Further, they aggravate food insecurity and trigger divisive intra-community and inter-country competition for resources. Kenya has developed a robust climate change action plan to scale up efforts and to maintain a low carbon development trajectory. The plan includes commitment to restore degraded water towers, accelerate forest restoration, and to increase our tree cover to at least 10% of our land area in order to promote a sustainable blue economy, but also promoting green manufacturing. Indeed, as many of you know, Kenya is a pace setter in the energy sector. We are among the top eight global leaders in geothermal power development and home to the largest wind power project on the African continent. Currently, close to 90% of the electricity used by Kenyans is from renewable energy sources, and we plan to achieve 100% renewable energy by the year 2030. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya is doing her fair share. Let me, however, hasten to add that these are mere baby steps relative to the enormity of the climate change challenge. Kenya came to this meeting with high expectations that COP26 will deliver on at least four critical issues. First, to see an increase in ambition in emissions reduction, the major emitters must make more ambitious their emission reduction commitments. We all must harness low-carbon investment opportunities as we reboot our economies. Second, we would like to see a quantum increase in climate finance. Two times in a row, developing countries have been promised US dollars 100 billion per year, but this has yet to be delivered. Today, once again, yet another pledge of 2023. Third, we would like to see ambition on adaptation and loss and damage. With climate impacts increasing, provisions to help the most vulnerable to adapt, including through increased financial support, should be strengthened. Finally, we expect that detailed rules and procedures for implementing the Paris Agreement will be finalized, and a clear way forward for climate resilient pathways set. We also expect that the agreement will be sufficiently inclusive to accommodate the needs and priorities of developing countries, and in particular, the special needs and circumstances of Africa. 
which, is put, which has been very ably put forward earlier and very well articulated by Elizabeth Wahote, the young girl who spoke to us earlier. Indeed, the findings of the inter international scientific community, including the recent report of the Integrated Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, on the physical science and basis of climate change, underscore the, need, the special needs and circumstances of Africa contribute to the vulnerability and the low adaptive capacity of African countries to climate change. The IPCC further notes that even with scaled up global climate action, it will not be possible to avoid and to reduce all loss and damage from the impacts of climate change, and that by 2030, the economic costs of loss and damage in developing countries is expected to be between US dollars 290 billion and US dollars 580 billion. Throughout Africa, as the most vulnerable continent to the impacts of climate change, countries are already experiencing loss and damage of an increasing magnitude and frequency. We are therefore deeply concerned to hear that yesterday, during the adoption of the agenda for this conference, the item on the special needs and circumstances of Africa was yet again not adopted. And we expect the COP president to undertake extensive and comprehensive consultations and address the special needs and circumstances of African states and indeed report back to us before the close of the session of, this con of the conference. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, our own Kenyan Eliud Kipchoge, the greatest marathoner of all time and our climate champion, and who will be attending this conference, has demonstrated to us that in a race against time, no human is limited. We have the means and the ability to protect our planet from climate change-related destruction and to secure peace and stability for all. What we need now is to recognize that we are in a race against time and we need unanimity of purpose. We need boldness and unwavering political commitment to achieve the 1.5 degree pathway. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency.